Hey there guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how you can create a procedural pathway in Blender by using geometry nodes. And you have to only draw a curve and it will create a path for you. And also the path will have a different material. You can also change the width and the depth of the path. And what's even cooler is you can instance something like grass and it won't be on the path. And also it updates in real time. And if you want this scene that I created, then you can get that from my Gumroad page by following the link down in the description. So with that all being said, let's deep dive into the video. So for this we are gonna need Blender 3.0 which is in alpha right now. So you can get that from builder.blender.org, the links down in the description. And it's a zip file so you have to unzip that, then just open up Blender. And now we have Blender 3.0. So now let's start by deleting everything. Then I'm gonna add a plane and I'm gonna go to edit mode and I'll scale that up to maybe 10 times. And you can't see the keys that I'm pressing because in Blender 3.0 the screencast keys add-on isn't working. I don't know why. And now let's go out of edit mode. And now let's create a new workspace. And now we have the new geometry nodes workspace. So now let's create that. And I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space in here. So now let's create a new node tree and I'm gonna rename that to pathway and right now we only have four vertices but we need more subdivisions for the effect to work. So we can subdivide the plane in the geometry nodes editor by adding a subdivide node and you can see the plane subdividing if I subdivide the plane in wireframe mode. So I'm gonna increase the level all the way up to 6 and also we are gonna need a curve so now let's add a curve and now let's go to edit mode and I'm gonna delete all the vertices because we don't need that but instead we are gonna use the draw option and now we can just draw the curve but if you draw the curve from any other angle it won't be on the plane so you can switch this from cursor to surface and now when we draw the curve and now when you draw the curve it will be on the plane so I'm gonna undo these steps because I don't want these curves and now let's go out of edit mode and now what we want is the distance from this path and this plane and then we'll use that data to lower the ground where the curve or where the path is so now what we can do is we can add an attribute proximity node in the geometry nodes editor and now we have to define the target so we can just drag and drop this nerves path in the geometry nodes editor and now let's connect the geometry to the target and now in the distance we have to define an attribute where this data will be stored so now we can create a new attribute and you can call that whatever you want but I'm gonna call mine prox and you can see a first sign appearing and that means we are creating a new attribute I'm gonna move these over here and now let's add an attribute mix node and I'm gonna change the blend type from mix to add and for the first attribute I'm gonna choose position and for the second I'm gonna choose normal and for the result I'm gonna choose the position again and if you don't know what's a normal a normal is just the direction in which the face is facing so in our case this face is facing towards the z-axis and now when you increase the factor the plane moves up and why is it happening is because the normal of this plane is facing towards the z-axis and we are adding the normal to the position so instead of this factor to move the plane up we can use the attribute that we created to move this plane so we can change the factor from float to attribute and now we can just hover the mouse over this and press ctrl c and then press ctrl v and now nothing's happening and also the plane is gone so why isn't this working is because we are using a curve into the target but instead we need a mesh so we could select this curve and convert that to mesh but if we convert this to mesh we won't be able to modify the curve again 
So now luckily in Blender 3.0 there are new curve nodes and we can just add the curve to mesh node after the object info node and that will convert the curve to a mesh but you can see that is still nothing is happening and that's because the attribute proximity node is searching for faces to calculate the distance but our curve doesn't have any faces so we can simply switch that from faces to edges but it's still it's not the effect that we wanted and we want this plane to be flat but we want that to be lower down where the path is so what we can do is we can add an attribute color ramp so i'm gonna search for that and i'm gonna bring that in and we want this to affect the displacement of our plane so we have to put that before the attribute mix modifier and after the prox attribute has been created so i'm gonna select these nodes and i'm gonna just move these over here and i'm gonna put that in the middle and for the attribute i'm gonna copy and paste the prox attribute by hovering over that and pressing ctrl c then pressing ctrl v and for the result also and now you can see the effect working and also you can see that this plane's height is from a value of 0 to a value of 1 on the z-axis and that's because the attribute color ramp makes the prox attribute from a value of 0 to a value of 1 because the black colors means a value of 0 and the white color means a value of 1 and you can't increase this value which is higher than 1 but you can type in a value which is higher than 1 so I'm going to type in 2 over here and now you can see that this plane's height is now from 0 to 2 but I don't want that so I'm gonna undo these steps and also let me erase these numbers so you can change these colors to change the depth of the path and you can also play with these stops to get the effect that you want and the attribute mix node makes the plane move up and you can see that by disabling or muting the node by pressing M but I don't want the plane to move up but instead what I want is to make the plane stay where it is and make the path to be lowered down so what you can do is you can change the blend type from add to subtract and also you need to flip the color ramp and now you can see that the plane stays where it is but the path is lowered down i'm gonna shade it smooth this plane and it's still looking a little bit jagged so you can increase the subdivision level to 7 by typing in 7 or instead you can add a smooth modifier and increase the reputation to make the plane smoother and you can see the nodes Where are they? Where are they? and you can see the nodes and that's because the smooth modifier has been selected so you can select the geometry nodes modifier and now the nodes will back and if you want to control that how broad this path is then you can add an attribute math node and I'm gonna put that before the attribute color ramp but after the attribute proximity node and for the first attribute I'm gonna use the prox attribute and for the second I'm gonna change that to float and also it will result back to attribute prox and now I'm gonna change the blend type from add to multiply and now nothing's happening and, and it's because the attribute prox is being multiplied to a value of 0 and it will result back to a value of 0 because multiplying to a value of 0 equals to a value of 0 haven't you got to school so if I increase this factor to 1 it will get our path back and now we can use this factor to control how broad our path is and also you can play with the color ramp I'm gonna set this back to 1 and also you can duplicate this attribute multiply node 
and put that after the attribute color ramp and now you can use this factor to change the depth of this path and one handy thing that you can do is you can plug any factor into the group input and I'm gonna plug this one as well and now I'm gonna open up the sidebar by hitting N and now I'm gonna rename the first input to width and I'm gonna rename the second input to depth and now you can easily control these two factors from the geometry nodes modifier and you don't need to go into the nodes to change a value and now we have the path working and it also updates if we change the curve so end of the tutorial no there's more effects that I want to show you so if you want to take this to the next level you can add a displacement modifier and I'm gonna create a new texture real quick and I'm gonna edit the texture and I'm gonna change the type to clouds I'm gonna increase the size and and in the displacement modifier I'm gonna decrease the strength down a bit to something like this and this displacement is all over this plane but I don't want the displacement to be on the path so for that we need to create a vertex group so I'm gonna create a new vertex group and we don't want to paint the vertex group because we want to be able to change the curve later so what we can do is we can go into the geometry nodes modifier and I'm gonna add a new attribute color ramp node and I'm gonna put that just before the group, group output node over here so for the attribute I'm gonna select the prox attribute that we created I'm gonna go to weight paint view so you can see the effect and for the result we can choose the vertex group that we created and you can see the effect happening and what the color ramp is doing is it's overwriting the vertex group that we created with the attribute prox and also by using these stops we have more control over this vertex group and now in the displacement modifier we can choose the vertex group and you can see that it's the opposite so we can flip the color ramp from here and now it's the effect that we want or you can also flip the vertex group from here and now the displacement is everywhere but else the path and if you want this to take even further I'm gonna go to the shading tab and I'm gonna switch to rendered view and keep in mind that this effect only works in cycles so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a new material and I'm gonna now add an attribute node and now in the name we have to type in the attribute that we created and it was prox if you remember and you can preview this attribute node by holding ctrl shift and left clicking on that if you have enabled the node wrangler add-on in the preferences and everybody should have enabled that and now you can see that we have a black and white mask that we can use to mix two materials like we can mix a grass material with a soil material and it will be so cool so to show you the effect I'm gonna add a mix RGB node real quick and for the first color I'm gonna pick a green color that represents grass and for the second color I'm gonna pick a yellowish color something like this doesn't matter and I'm gonna plug this into the base color and for the mix factor I'm gonna plug in the attribute node and now you can see that it's all green except where this path is and it will also update if we edit the curve and it's pretty cool and if you want this to take even further you can use the vertex group that we created to instance something like grass so to show you how to do this effect I'm gonna add a cube and I'm gonna move this over here and I'm gonna go to edit mode and I'm gonna scale that down to something like this and now we want this cube to scatter on this plane so you can select the plane and in the geometry nodes you can add a point distribute node to distribute points and then add a point instance node to instance this cube 
but what i like to do and also it has some benefits by doing in this way is to add a mesh and it could be anything so i'm gonna add a plane and now i'm gonna create a new node tree and i'm gonna rename that to instance thing so now if we delete this group input node our mesh will be gone and now i'm gonna drag the previous plane from the outliner into the geometry nodes editor and now I'm going to plug in the object info node into the group output and you can't see anything happening but now we have the duplicate of the same plane that we previously created. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this plane to scatter this cube. So I'm going to add a point distribute node and now the second plane that we created recently has been converted to points. But if we select the first plane and if we move that, the points will still remain at the same point. But we do want the points to follow this plane. And the reason why this is happening is because in the second plane that we created, in the object info node, this is set to original. And it is taking the global transformations of this plane. And that means if we move this plane, we have to apply the location. And now the points will be moved to the plane. But we don't want to do this every time when we move the plane. So I'm going to undo these steps. So what we can do is we can select the second plane from the outliner. And then in the object info node, we can change this from original to relative. And now if we move this plane, the points will follow that. And also you would have noticed that, that the path isn't updating. And it's the same reason. So you can set this from original to relative and now the path will also update. And now I'm going to select the second plane and I'm going to add a point instance node. And now I'm going to instance this cube. And now we have cubes all over this plane but we don't want the cubes to be on the path. So in the density we can choose the vertex group that we created. And now the cubes won't be on this path. And instead of these cubes, you can scatter grass, rocks or anything you want. So that's one of the ways of creating a procedural pathway in Blender. And it's pretty useful. And if you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and double down below for more videos and tutorials. I'll be back.